Well, good morning, everyone. Cows are milking still pretty well. They come in this morning pretty full, actually. Oh, that's a nice udder on that cow. I think for February, I ended up being about 22% ahead for the month. And we're sitting in March. It's only sort of mid-March or early to mid-March at the moment. And we're about 15% ahead of last year. And if we keep going the way we are going, like these cows have held on to production for sort of the last five weeks. Nothing's really changed in that time. We'll probably have our best March ever by quite a bit I imagine. I was just looking through a few historical records and we'll probably beat our best year by about a thousand milk solids which is quite a lot. I've also got a little bit of help this morning. Anthony's given me a hand, one of mum and dad's friends. It's from the big smoke of Titarangi. Yeah in Auckland yeah. Yeah in Auckland if you didn't know where that was but they are off on holiday today yes. over to the mount over to the timeshare but they came and stayed the night give me a hand or well, gave dad a hand too and it's pretty handy teat spraying it saves me about 20 minutes of milking time which is actually quite a bit come on gilly gillies come on up you get come on it's not only teat spraying that saves me a bit of time it gets up in the yard so i don't have to and they load real easy Anthony's actually a big watcher, well, him and his yes. wife Lou, they watch my videos and, <laughs> and you're a city boy through and through. Yeah, 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 heck yeah. And they find it quite interesting, which is quite cool to hear feedback like this. So they don't have, well, I guess they have things to do with the farm when they come here and he likes to get out and help, like, like I said, he's, he's here this morning. But apart from that, he just likes to know what's going on and, and yeah. finds it interesting, which is which is cool to hear. Yeah, well, what, what it comes down to a lot of times is, is city folk or other people don't seem to understand yeah, our comprehension is um, you just have cows and you just go put them in a field. Yeah. And you just feed yeah. them grass and you come in and they just milk them, that's all you've got to do. You know, they just, that's, that's what farmers do. But the complexity of, and you've got to, they've got to drill the fields, they've got to plant maize, they've got to you do chicory. You've got to do all those different aspects and it all has to be done in the correct time. Yeah, it's, and we can all do it phenomenal. so much differently to get the same product at the end of the day. There's so many ways yeah. to skin that cat. But Anthony's actually an architect by trade too. Last full rows out of here and it is about 10 past eight. So yeah, easily 10 to 15 minutes quicker. We milked 20 rows during peak. We're actually still milking 20 rows at the moment, but we should be down to 19 soon. I'd say it takes about a minute to a minute and a half to teat spray each row, which is probably pretty plausible. At least a minute, that's 20 minutes. So you can see where that time saving is. They do do an automatic teat spray which sits in the exit race of the cow shed. Our race probably isn't designed for it because it's really short. You sort of need like a longer sort of a race and, and that cow shed's really not built for it. I just don't think it's got the space to put anything like that in. Plus it does use a little bit more teat spray by having an automatic one. And also I think they say like the faster you can apply it, the better, better results you get. So that's sort of the reason we don't have one. And I don't know if I'd really look into it anytime so maybe if we were to like extend the cow shed maybe maybe i'd sort of weigh it up then but at the moment it works fine just how we're doing it certainly helps when anthony's down though our two wheelers are just going to town to get service so coming up the gator there was a little bit of rain forecast for this morning and see it's sort of just spitting on the windshield at the moment hasn't really come to much yet i think it might be getting a little bit heavier later on around that sort of 10 11 mark i've also got a truckload of furt coming about then too. I had a text this morning. I did want to get some autumn furt on and it was going to be next week but she's had a cancellation and could fit me in so that's perfect. That'll work. Yep there it is. That'll get things ticking along again. Would have been real good to have this in the ground though. This is all the permanent pasture seed there. I get the annual seed straight from Finches but it hasn't been drilled yet. Today's Friday. I was hoping they were going to get here sometime before this rain. Let's sort of stop now. It just hasn't happened. So hopefully over the next couple of days, I think there is a little bit more next week. Although there's a lot of moisture in the ground at the moment, so it's not really going to matter. But yeah, it would be good to get that in the ground as soon as possible. But they are pretty flat out at the moment, so understandably, just got to wait in line. Bird trucks turned up, we are putting on a bit of DAP, it's not straight DAP, like there is a little bit of a mix. I'm not sure exactly what it is though, I didn't actually look at the order form, just 
uh, the rep sort of sent it through or organised it for us. It's going on at 150 kilos to the hectare. This is our autumn fertiliser. And the way it's going might put on a little bit of sustain maybe later on too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're going to think about that one. But there's five tonnes on that truck, so it should do about 33 hectares, which is probably a little bit more than a third of the farm by the time you take away the cropping areas out of it so we should get a big chunk of it done three loads of this and, and the whole lot's done but the sun's coming out <laughs> it'd be quite nice if if that rain came back about now it's a little bit black over there but i think that was supposed to be it it was supposed to stop at about lunchtime Dad's just brought my bike back to me, it's just come back from town all clean, it's looking brand new again. But doesn't this just annoy you? It's been to town, look how loose my clutch cable is, it's worse than when it went in. Should have fixed that really. Can't have too much left in there, but these grass paddocks will love this, they're looking a little bit hungry. They probably should have been looked after a little bit better, but however, I think there's a bit of sulphur that's gone on too with this mix, as you can see. It's a little bit yellow there, it's probably sulphur. There's a big chunk of it. Look at that, big chunk. Before I forget though, I better record where I put this third on, so it's pretty easy. I just print out maps like these and cross off the paddocks that get done as such. That one, that one, that one. Those two didn't. I'll finish that off and then when I put the next load on I'll just use a different colour. Just an easy way to keep track for me. While I'm in my office I thought I'd pull this up. This is the sample that got sent away of the maize, so the core samples, and it's come back as dry matter 33.3%. So the chopper said 32, which isn't really that far off. I was sort of hoping for about 34, 35, but it is what it is. It's actually the next day now. I've pretty much covered the stack. They say these green covers you don't need to go quite so much tire to tire, although maybe I will, and that is basically just to get rid of those tires there because we've sort of been cleaning up as, as I've gone so there was a lot of plastic lying in there which we've pulled out you can see all the little bits there where the rats have been if you can remember last year I had a massive problem with the rats around the stack they pretty much tore the front here to shreds and this year I think I'm going to be sweet as I haven't seen many around whatsoever I've sort of been keeping on top of the bait station which is pretty much just these overflow pipes with a bit of wire through it so there's still bait in there which is good it has been nibbled a little bit I'll just put it back down there. There's another one there, and oh, it doesn't even look like it's really been touched. Maybe nibbled it just a little bit. They rang up to say they'll send the drill around today, so perfect timing. Jackie's back with a new tractor. Look at that, very flat. Uh, annual? Yeah. Annual? Yeah. The one over there? Yeah. Annual? Yeah. These three? Yeah. Permanent? Permanent. Yeah. Um, do you have some of your own seed? Is that going over to them three? Yeah, I'll leave that at the gateway there for you. And so, you yeah, go out there, through that paddock, into yeah. that one. It's only about a hectare this paddock so not real big in the scheme of things and when we put it in maize in October that'll be the third time in a row that this paddock's been in maize but it's just handy because it's like right in the corner of the farm so the cows have got to walk a wee way to get here and it's nice and handy to the pit there so just keep keep recycling it and they said with the strip till because I'll probably strip till this paddock next year as well they can because everything's GPS They'll move the strip from where the corn stubble is now to in the middle. So the next strip next year will be in the middle of where it is now, which is pretty cool, I think. They've actually just bought a new strip bar tool too. So the one that they used in 
the planting videos they sold that and the new one they're planning to put fur down before they plant it I think that's the sort of end goal with it and it should work out pretty well I'll leave that seed there for her so once she's finished in here she can load up and then I said just run a strip through here the cows made a little bit of a mess not that long ago by the look of it so that'll sort of tidy that little area up Ooh, that sugar sweet. You got what I need. That's it, pull it back. Oh, how good is this? Finally got a gate opener. Every day it's a dream. Right, should we go see the tractor? Yeah. Just a quick calibration because we've swapped seed. But check out that, doesn't it do an awesome job? It looks outstanding. I reckon that's such a good calibration technique, having a scale you can hang something on instead of like an old plate one where you'd put it there and then put a bowl on top of it, works real well. I'm going to get it to disc this paddock a little bit harder than that annual just because it's quite uneven like through here, there's sort of a few old plough marks there that I sort of want to get levelled out a little bit and then down there there might be a few wheel marks, same with up this hill so this one will get disced a little bit harder. Not real bad, but just try and smooth it out a little bit and then those other two aren't, aren't too bad. Oh, you can see like there's a little bit of a dip there, so if we, can, if we can sort of smooth that out just a little bit, it'll help. This paddock was the worst weed-wise and you can see like there's a big green patch in here which Dad's obviously missed with the sprayer. Same with there. Oh, look at that, that's a black beetle. squished it but check out all that moisture in the soil it's so good to have that this time of the year instead of being bone dry it's also so good we don't have to wait for rain to get it germinated it should be pretty set now we've got that moisture we've got heat we should have pretty good germination over the sort of next couple of weeks which is very exciting for us because that means we get a bit more of a yield going into autumn so that will pretty much do it for this video guys it is awesome that we are getting this done, that's just one of the major things I suppose that in autumn ticked off. There is that, that little paddock up by the deer shed up there to do, but they are coming into power harrow. Jackie's going to drop the drill off after this, go and power harrow that and then get a roller drill it. The reason they are roller drilling that one is because there's quite bad wheel rut from there. They had trouble when they were harvesting and we're going to run that power harrow through it, smooth everything else because it's going in permanent. If it was annual it wouldn't be so bad, but I don't want to put that paddock back into maize because they, they did have trouble getting it off there in the first place. But that will pretty much do it for this video guys, hope you enjoyed it, thumbs up like always and see you next time.